Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Um, uh, my name is Trey Chambers, and I am uh, president of Express Dental Laboratory out of Norman, Oklahoma. And a big, a big part of uh, the the way we structured our lab is is around what we call model free dentistry. Um, uh, essentially, fabricating crowns and bridges um, without the aid of of a, of a model, of a hand model of, of any sort, or a milled model, or a printed model, for that fact. Essentially, what we are able to provide our doctors are uh, well-fitting crowns that are produced in an expedited amount of time that have uh, exceptional fits. And we're able to accomplish that uh, <clears throat> with monolithic crowns uh, and using some of this digital technology. Uh, I'm going to go over uh, two topics as far as model-free dentistry. There's two workflows that the Serona system lets us, uh, gives us access to to allow us to make these model-free crowns. Uh, the first is a new technology using the uh, Ineos uh, X5 scanner, um, and it's tr it's their triple tray scanning uh, uh, technique. So I'm just going to run through that real quick, and then following that, we're going to touch on um, the Omnicam and the intraoral scanning, some fabricating crowns using the uh, uh, the Serona Connect uh, workflow. So <clears throat> um, I want to go over a couple of terms real quick that that uh, we kind of look at when we're, when we're thinking about you know, how we want to focus our practice, how we want to want to improve things. So Six Sigma is a discipline. It's data-driven approach and methodology for eliminating defects. Uh, it's driven toward uh, six standard deviations between the mean and the nearest specific limit in any process from manufacturing to transactional and from uh, product to service. And then streamlining is to make an organization or a system more efficient and effective by employing faster, simpler working methods. So these are these are concepts and principles that any manufacturing or any 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 manufacturing company wants to implement in the manufacturing processes to help them eliminate waste and help them fabricate things uh, more accurately and, and faster. So using the digital technology that Serona provides us allows us to really um, help become more efficient and more lean in our manufacturing process. By uh, <clears throat> we just took a look at, at our at our lab and uh, what our our digital all digital restorations at, and we're at a remake ratio of less than one percent with an all digital solution, where there's a standard uh, uh, industry standard of about six percent remake on uh, crown and bridges. Um, the reason why we feel like going digital helps reduce that remake ratio is because there's less opportunity. Uh, for uh, introduction, uh, you know, of introducing poor PVS impressions into the actual workflow by using like intraoral scans, we're able to uh, circumvent not only bad PVS impressions, but then when we, when we scan the PVS impression, instead of uh, pouring up, we also eliminate possibilities for bubbles, tears, and other distortions that we might get during the, in the model phase. Um, also, uh, by using intraoral scanners, um, this allows the doctor to look at their prep on a large screen and identify where the margin is and make sure there's different analyzing tools that allows them to make sure that they have reduced uh, their, their crown preparation sufficiently to allow for clearance for, for a final you know, crown. Uh, also, uh, some things that help us get more streamlined and lean is we're able to eliminate with the intraoral scans, we're able to eliminate shipping costs, and we're actually able to receive it at the lab instantly versus waiting for a courier or a, or a shipping company to ship the, the actual case to us. And, and then also we're able to eliminate the whole uh, QC, the you know, impression, sterilization, model pour up, you know, die trimming, QCing, you know, the whole model process essentially we're able to eliminate that out of the workflow and that helps us provide our, uh, pr pr uh, fabricate our crowns and provide them to our providers in a shorter amount of time. So firstly, first to, to get going, I want to start on um, the actual um, fabricating crown just using a PVS impression without, without pouring it up by scanning this impression. So there's a number of uh, different uh, PVS impression materials out there on the market. Um, these scannable impression materials uh, are becoming more and more popular and you can typically identify them by the color, typically a lighter color PVS impression and that allows them to scan better. Dark, dark PVS, PVS impressions that are like dark purple, brown, dark blue, they're typically harder for the, the scanners 
to scan. Some of the actual PVS impressions also come with a titanium oxide infused inside of them that allows them to reflect the light off the scanners a little bit better and scan a little bit better. So when you're wanting to uh, start scanning PVS impressions to, the, to do these model-free crowns, there needs to be a communication between you and the, and the, between the lab and the doctor to let them know that <clears throat> it's, it's very possible, but they need to be uh, conscious of the type of PVS impression they're choosing to use. If you're wanting to use a triple tray scanning just for the occasional same day crown, where you can make a same day crown without actually having to use a intraoral scanner, we want to make sure that our doctors are using uh, material that we've tested and, and, and that we know that are good, uh, good to scan on, on the actual scanner. So uh, Curb, this is a product that we've used that we've had great success with. It's, it's made by Kerr and uh, it has a, a titanium oxide infused inside the, the PVS. It's, it's fabricated by Kerr. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what their brand name is, but I think if you visit with a Kerr rep and ask them what their scannable PVS is, I think they can refer you to it. <clears throat> I think uh, Dent Supply Caulk might also have a product as well. Okay, so we're, I'm just going to go over the, work, the workflow real quick uh, to show you how we uh, do a model-free case using the PV, uh, triple tray scanning. Uh, first, you're going to set it up just like a regular case. There's nothing different in the admin administration screen. Uh, it's, you're going to set it up just like you're setting up a regular case. So here we're setting up the case for tooth number two, full contours or coating crown. All right, and then once you um, once you get to the scan phase, the arm's going to want to drop down and, and scan the case just like a normal case. What we want to do is we want to go over to our um, our acquisition options on the right hand, right toolbar of the screen. And we want to select the acquisition options and then we want to toggle the triple tray uh, uh, function. When we do that, it's going to bring up this graphic that you see on the, uh, on the screen and it's going to give you instructions on how to orient the jig, the triple tray scanning jig. So there's two types of triple trays that we can scan, full arch or interior uh, quadrant trays and then also posterior quadrant trays. We have to, on, on the graphic, you can see uh, on the side of the jig, there's a, a marker or indication or graphic that you can adjust the jig up and down for triple tray scanning or for uh, full arch triple tray scanning. So in this particular case, we're doing a, a posterior quadrant. So I set my jig up for uh, a posterior quadrant, a post posterior quadrant. I assemble uh, my okay so here I, I take my triple tray and I screw it into the jig and then the jig actual to actually toggles up and down so in that first graphic it shows that we want to have the the triple tray the posterior triple tray um, uh, toggled to the downward position also <clears throat> Notice that this, this jig slides back and forth. So if we were scanning an interior or a full arch triple tray, we would slide this over and tighten it in this, in this lower position. But for the posterior quadrants, we want to bring it out to this end of the, of the jig and tighten it down. And then to start doing the initial, the initial scan, we're going to want to have it in the downward position. So the graphic is uh, very helpful. All right. Um, so. Once you, once, you, uh, once you have a position in the orientation that the graphic has you uh, orient it, essentially whatever you're looking at on your machine it, what is what needs to, whatever you see on the screen is what needs to be displayed on your, on your machine. You can go ahead and just start scanning and it starts doing the scanning process. Um, once, you, once it scans, it kind of does it like the reduced scan mode. It just kind of scans the, the impression, it identifies missing areas and then it goes and captures those areas. Uh, after the initial scan, you can correct the, the jawline. This is fairly important because we want to tell the computer where the actual cusps are, where actually the teeth are, so that it's not working really hard to try to fill in that data, but it's just capturing the data that we actually need. So this is kind of a, a nice way to orient, uh, to, to, to communicate to the, to the scanner what, what area we actually want to scan. So here we've, we've oriented the jawline. Uh, along the occlusal table of the posterior quadrant that we're wanting to scan. Um, once it gets done scanning, you can kind of see what it looks like uh, in a negative. It kind of actually does kind of look 3D. Uh, you, can, you can toggle the image back and forth and see what it looks like in, as a negative or even a positive since it's just a skin shell of a scan. 
uh, we'll go ahead and click continue, and then the and then the graphic comes up, and it asks us to position it in the in the in the next position. So when we when we scan it initially, it's, it was in the upward upward position. When we scan it the second time, it's in the in the in the lower position. This allows the jig to be to position the posterior triple tray uh, in a, in a position that's easy easy for the scanner to scan. So I just want to uh, share a quick video of of what it looks like while while it's scanning. Okay. Let me try that one more time. So there we position it in the downward position to scan the uh, the actual prep. And so when it flips around to scan the, the underside of that triple tray impression, it's now located in a position that's easier to, to access under the light. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't really recall. I think it's about the same time as scanning a regular model. So probably, you know, f yeah, eight minutes or so. Um, it's also really important that when you uh, do these triple tray scans, that we actually trim the f the flash, if you will. We want to try to get as rid as much extra information that we don't that we that's on the impression. We don't need to really scan the soft tissue that we captured on that triple tray. Uh, we really need to just cut it back so we can see you know what we're looking at, maybe just like the sulcus and, and the actual tooth structures. All right. Um, <clears throat> again, it's same same method for uh, scanning uh, in this in this case our arch that's been prepped. Uh, we want to use the correct jawline to identify where the actual triple tray is located. Uh, but then we do also have the option of highlighting where the prep is in this step. So we want to highlight the information that's most important, which is our, our prep. So we want to make sure that we're capturing the, uh, the interproximal contact information, and we want to make sure that our margins are highlighted. That way, if there's any missing data in those areas, the scanner's going to try extra hard to make sure we fill in those areas. Okay, once it gets done scanning, this is what it looks like. So you can kind of see, again, there's our scan in a negative. You kind of see where the margin's at. You can roughly see where the, the prep's at and the other teeth are. Um, I go ahead and click continue at this, at this step. Once you click continue, it rotates the uh, a triple tray impression and takes the buckle bite automatically. And what it does is it, it starts on one side of the, tra of the tray and it starts just rotating the tray around, capturing uh, 360 around, uh, degrees around the, the actual uh, triple tray, and it uses this to articulate it. So that's an image right there of what the buckle bite, what we would call the buckle bite, or consider the buckle bite scan, looks like. So it uses that information to articulate the upper and lower arches from our triple tray scan. What if the bite's not right? Um, there are, uh, if the bite's not, okay, the bite needs to be right because that's going to make life a lot easier. If the bite's not right, the software does have some manual um, manual move tools uh, inside the model, edit model phase. Um, but I really think like for, this, for these instances, I mean, we, we want to probably set ourselves up for success by making sure that uh, by disqualifying cases where the, the tray has been bit or, or flexed. <coughs> All right, so here's the case as, it, as it's presented in the edit model phase. It, uh, it comes up, we see the red around the edges, that's the flash from the tray, and we can actually remove this information using the, the unnecessary information using the edit model tools. In this case, I used the uh, cut tool just to cut around the extra flash that I didn't actually need for the case. All right, once we get uh, both, both quadrants trimmed up, then we just treat it just like a regular case from this point forward. We set it up in the, uh, uh, the model axis phase aligning our uh, cusps where we want them and, and, and teeth locations where we want them to get a, a good proposal. Uh, we identify uh, two centers and we edit our jaw line. Okay, and then when we place that, when we place this dot over our actual prep, it gives us an initial uh, margin line that we can then go back and refine. And then we go ahead and propose our crown. So. Uh, Here's the crown. We went ahead and poured up a model for this case and put the crown on the, on the model, and we had an excellent fit on the margin. The margin integrity was great. I would probably honestly trust uh, the uh, impression scan over the model because of the potential for nicking the margin during the die trim. Do you modify the margin if you have to 
Yeah, so this is, again, this is probably where we want to communicate with our doctors, probably qualify a case for triple trace scanning. Um, <clears throat> you can use the edit model tool to move volume out of the way. You can uh, uh, trim, trim the uh, uh, flash in the actual PVS impression if you see it in there. Uh, but we want to communicate to our doctors just like Yeah, so again, you can use edit model tools or smooth add, remove, trim, cut, different tools you can use. But one thing to kind of keep in mind um, <clears throat> with the triple tray scanning, when you pour up a model, you pour up a model and you, can, and you pull it out and typically parts of the PVS comes out with it, right? And uh, so tissue over the margin, sometimes there's a PVS, a film of PVS, and we can kind of die trim it and cut away that flash, right? The PVS comes out when we die trim. Well, with this, we don't have stone Im impeding everything. It's just, it's, huh? They, if they do scan it with the flash on it. Um, um, I, 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 so I think, I think it goes back to, to a couple things. Uh, you, you, you have to make sure that the case is ideal. Again, we're using, trying to use the correct material. We don't want the doctor biting on the tray. We actually try to communicate to our doctors just like we do with a lot of our model-free Omnicam cases. We want to be able to see the, visually see those margins clearly. So we ask our doctors to keep them equal or super gingival uh, because we, don't, we run into issues when it, even with PVS impressions and model trimming, when the, when the margins are subgingival, they're very difficult to see. So if there's tissue over it in the, in the impression, I think that's where we step back and say, okay, are we going to proceed with this case? Can I modify it in the edit model phase enough? There's, there's tools there to edit the model, but, but you're limited on, on what you can do. If, it's, if it, you look at it and say, okay, this is a thing where I'm going to have to, I would feel more comfortable trimming it, doing it, you know, trimming it by hand on a solid model, then I think at that point you step back and say, hey. Yeah, so there's some design, there's, there's design tools. I'll just jump back real quick and show you. Are you familiar with any of the edit model tools? So you have your cut, your cut tool, your place tool to, to cut, to, to lasso something and remove it completely. And you have your form tool. So you can modify the model itself, but I, you can't necessarily say this, the computer doesn't know this is soft tissue right here. We need to remove it and move it. You know, it's just, a, it's just a solid model. Yeah. So you either do it, you can either, if it's, if you can adjust it manually using like the replace tool, then, then excellent. But if it's something where it's impeding there, I mean, you're, you're, you're limited in what you can do. You have to have a good impression to see your margin to make a, a decent crown. Okay. Is, is that, any other questions, thoughts? And that's pretty much triple tray scanning in a nutshell. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the, only, the only new you know, technique that's being introduced is the triple tray scanning itself. The design, the design workflow, the edit model workflow, those are the, the same as before. Just we want to make sure we're using a PVS that's scannable, that we're using the, the jig that Serona has for their new Ineos X5 scanner, and that we're just following the workflow that's illustrated on the screen. OK. Uh, yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're using a PVS impression that's scannable, no scan spray is necessary. If you are using like a darker, a darker PVS impression that's like maybe a dark blue or brown or purple or, or one of those other dark colors, then you might want to, you might, you, you can spray it with a, a, a scannable powder and, and it scans in just as fine. It's just, I have an easier time of it personally using a scannable impression material. Uh, and so I just, if I'm doing this for my doctors, I'm only going to qualify a scan if they've used a scannable PBS impression. Yes, sir. Yeah, I would. I would not. I would not. Uh, I would definitely not scan the impression with like blood or cord in it. I think that's going to affect the scan of it, especially if the cord's moving during the scan. Uh, I would say uh, scanning PBS only, nothing else added. Okay. Any other thoughts on triple tray? We're going to move on to my favorite, Omnicam. Can you scan interior? Say that. Can you scan interior? Yeah, you can scan interior triple trays as well. There's, huh? Lowers. Lowers, yes. 
you just want to make sure that there's not uh, that we've trimmed away any flash or any soft tissue that might impede the ability of the scanner to see down to the incisal edge. So um, the immediate benefit that we see is uh, the capability of making a, a, well, a good fitting crown without, um, without a model. So that removes the model appointment, the model labor. It removes um, any potential for um, error during the die trim station or die trim uh, step. It also um, eliminates what on the model when we pull the, the model out of the impression tearing of the PBS. So um, it's, it just expedites the workflow, I think, and it also eliminates steps, data transfers from PVS to model to scanning. And just by eliminating one data step, I think we increase our potential for having more accurate crowns, more accurate fitting crowns. Yeah, yeah, if that's, if that, and I think that's a good way to do it as you're getting, getting used to it. Okay, it just speeds up the process. And again, if you're wanting to do same day dentistry, provide your doctors with a, a same day crown, but you don't have like an Omnicam, this is, a, this is something that allows you to do that. The doctor can take the PVS impression, you can take it to the lab, scan it immediately, fabricate an Emacs crown, and, and it's, within an hour, have a crown finished for, for delivery to the patient. So that allows people who don't have intraoral scanners to have access to uh, fabricating same day crowns. And I think that's the big takeaway for this. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to jump over to, th I appreciate your comments. Uh, keep them coming, please. Okay, so um, as I'm sure we're all aware, there's been a lot of uh, disruption, I think, in the dental industry right now. Currently, over the last five years, there's been a lot of evolution and change. And that's, that's just how uh, the world works. That's how, how uh, different industries and markets work. There's always change. There's always things to improve on. Uh, just as man has evolved and cell phones have evolved and technology has evolved over the last couple of years, uh, we've also seen an evolution in, uh, in dentistry and specifically in uh, digital impressions. Uh, uh, a lot of doctors, real quick, a lot of doctors that I, I visit with, uh, when they get like an Omnicam or a digital impression machine, they say, oh, you know, there, there's a little bit of uh, getting used to it. There's a little bit of uh, 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 getting your technique down. You know, there's a little bit of a learning curve. And I say, yeah, yeah, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but typically after about the first month or so, you get used to it and you figure out how to do it. But I think with PVS impression taking, there's a huge learning curve. And I have doctors that have been doing PVS impressions for 20 years and still struggle with the learning curve of taking a PVS impression. And I have just a few examples here of some PVS impressions that our doctors have done. And, and, and I just want to illustrate <clears throat> how digital impressions are extremely accurate and, and, and contrast that to some of the, the obstacles that we, we see with PVS impressions. So here in this particular case, uh, and then another thing is digital impressions are just so much more convenient and comfortable for the patients. Um, uh, we have a photo here of, of just different impressions that we've seen or friends of mine have seen. But we get things where we have <clears throat> pulls from the light body, material with their separation, bubbles on the margin, complete distortions on the facial margin of this interior case. Here's a doctor wanting to do an, a beautiful interior case. but there's absolutely no facial information. Sometimes the doctors don't have the right materials, so they like to improvise with uh, the wrong types of trays. Uh, here's a you know example of how uncomfortable a, an impression can be for a patient, uh, where we were able to you know capture their throat instead of the actual teeth. Uh, <clears throat> uh, PVS impression. I mean, I've never heard of a, a digital a digital impression actually pulling off a crown. Uh, where you know, sometimes we see PVS impressions pull out crowns. We see things in the actual PVS impression, whether it's blood, crowns, you know, stuff that we don't want to see in the, in the impression. That's, that's stuff that we don't see off of Omnicam scan. So, I mean, accuracy, ability for the doctor to check their own, check their work, and just the, the comfort for the patient is, is huge. Uh, we like, and, and we like to call the, the PVS impression the calling card of a dentist. You can tell you know, how considerate or how, how, uh, how involved or how, uh, you know, you, you can tell a dentist by their impression, I guess. 
contrast that with digital impressions, whether we're using the Blue Cam, the Apollo, or the OmniCam, uh, we're capable of capturing crisp, clean images uh, that are able to be used instantly to design a crown. And it's not just for those single units. So we've had great success doing full arch restorations, bridges, single units, lower interiors off of these digital impressions across a, a variety of, of uh, systems. <clears throat> okay, so why, 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 uh, what are the benefits to digital impressions? A number of, there's, a, there's a number of benefits, and I just want to run through those with you real quick. Uh, first and foremost, my doctors truly feel that it improves lab to doctor communication. My doctors are able to send me that impression instantly. They're able to upload images to that, to that scan and send it instantly. They're able to track when they sent it. They're able to communicate when they want it back. They're able to know when I've actually received it. Um, also, it allows the doctor to identify where the margin's at. So the doctor can mark the margin and not only make sure that he had captured the margin, but tell me this is where the margin is going. This area might have like a look weird, like there might be a little bit of a of a, of a dip or an invagination in this area, but this is where it's at. It doesn't go straight over this area. It does crest here. You know, they're able to mark that margin and communicate with me clearly where, they, where, they, where their prep is at. They're also able to look at their impression in 3D. So instead of looking at a negative and thinking, oh, that looks good enough, you know what I mean? They're able to see it on a screen. They're able to see the prep is about the size of their head and identify whether that's a good prep or not. Um, the full color scanning is really nice. Uh, we like it a lot because we're able to tell where the soft tissue ends and where the enamel starts, where that margin starts. We can even see the transition where the dentin's at. We can see if the core is a dark core, if there's an amalgam core in there, or a blue colored core. So the full color scanning has a huge, huge benefits to us as a lab, knowing what we're actually building our crowns on top of. Uh, we feel that it reduces the number of bad impressions again because the doctors are able to do a quality control check on their own, their own work. And uh, we get it instantly. We forego the FedEx or the UPS, what it takes to get it to the lab. Uh, there's also a huge reduction in cost. It's a big money saver for everyone involved in the digital impression uh, workflow. Uh, it reduces various procedural costs, so things that are required to take an impression. I've never really had a doctor say I have to numb up the patient to take a, 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 a PVS impression. Or I'm sorry, I've never had a numb a patient take an endoral impression. Uh, the PBS material, you know, we estimate anywhere from $35 to $50 per, per impression uh, just in tray and material. Uh, PBS material is, is very expensive and uh, we're able to eliminate that by incorporating uh, uh, intraoral scans with our Omnicams. Uh, we don't have to pay for shipping and then also the chair time required to take a PBS impression. We're able to scan patients during what we call downtime. So a doctor comes in, his, the assistant sets up the room, the patient comes in, the doctor or the hygienist delivers anesthetic to get the patient numb for the procedure, and that's what we call downtime. They're waiting anywhere 5, 10, 15 minutes for the patient to get numb for the procedure. Well, in that time, the dental assistant or the doctor can go in and begin scanning the, the patient, scanning the, the, the uh, opposing surface of the teeth, scanning the patient's bite, even scanning the arch that the doctor's working on, and then the, 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 the doctor can actually cut out of that impression where the prep's going to be. So they can have the whole mouth scanned for that case and essentially the whole patient scanned before he's even cut, started cutting the teeth. Once uh, the doctor's done prepping, he can then just pick up his scanner, scan the prep tooth, put it down, and the impression's done. So it really helps the doctor speed up their chair time investment in uh, preparing a crown. Uh, a second thing is uh, we improve the patient experience by using intraoral scans. Uh, I've never heard a patient say, oh, I love that PVS impression. I love taking that impression. Can I take another one? They hate it. They absolutely hate it. And when we ask our patients, when we go in with the Omnicams and we scan them, we ask them, how was that experience? How did you like, what did you think about that scan? Well, they're, they're fascinated by it. It's new technology. It's, it, it didn't require them drooling everywhere and having a, a, a tray stuck in their mouth. And it was, it's, it's comfortable. It's not uncomfortable for them. Uh, also, impression taking time is much faster with, a, with an Omnicam. Um, you know, we eliminate fabrication cross, costs by eliminating the model step, and even the scanning step when we're using 
uh, intraoral scans. We don't have to pour up the models. We don't have to scan in the models. We're able to start making the crown immediately. And then there's no follow-up cost with specifically the Omnicams. And once you buy a, a Serona Omnicam, you don't have to pay annual fees. You don't have to pay license fees, click fees, send fees. You know, it's you buy it, you can send it to the lab back and forth. There's no, there's no extra costs. So, uh, we're big fans of the Omnicam DI. Our laboratory actually owns eight Omnicams, and we have these Omnicams placed at different doctors' offices, and they use them to send us send us their their cases uh, throughout uh, throughout the the day, the month, or whatever. They they use that, and that's our kind of exclusive tool for communicating back and forth. Uh, and receiving back and forth impressions from these offices. The things that I like about the Omnicam is that it's very small. It's, it fits in the size, of, it fits in your hand. It's very similar to the size of a, of a hand piece that a doctor uses. It's not big and bulky, and it's just easy to articulate and, and move. Um, it's powder free, so you don't have to use any kind of an opaquer or, or powder uh, to, scan, to scan the patient. It's just a, a high definition video camera that, that captures very quickly and uh, accurately and it just looks really nice. Even on titanium? Yeah, even on titanium. I think there were some issues before about um, with maybe scanning th reflective surfaces like titanium or, or gold. I think there's some concerns about that in the past. But I think they've done a really good job with their latest versions allowing us to scan metal, even, even shiny surfaces without, um, without issue. I think if there's, all, if there's ever a concern about reflective finishes, mirrored finishes on, on different prosthetics or things that might be in the mouth, we can always powder those with a, opa with a opaquing powder or like the uh, titanium oxide powder and uh, scan that easily. So there's always a, uh, there, you know, there's always a solution to, you can use powder but it's not, we, I have offices that haven't used it for, they, they had an, a blue cam before where they'd have to powder the entire tooth surface and they had it, they had the, the Opti spray left over but they haven't, once we got them into the Omnicams, they haven't had any need for it. <clears throat> uh, and then I think another, another thing, another uh, value to the Omnicams, I think that gets overlooked by many, is that it is an amazing intraoral scanner. It's an intraoral scanner that is a high, high definition that does both video capture and still shot capture. Also, in order to take a still shot, you don't have to actually press, press the wand like you do on most USB intraoral cameras. You simply hit the foot pedal and it takes a picture for you. Or you hit the foot pedal to start recording and stopping. You can essentially do an entire intraoral camera exam with the Omnicam in just a matter of moments by putting the camera on video mode, recording the patient's entire mouth, and then, and then you have a full video file of all the occlusal surfaces or whatever surfaces you recorded in your video and you can always freeze that video to take still shots for using uh, for images to send off to insurance claims for approving inlays or onlays or, or identifying where cracks are things that aren't, aren't visible uh, on, on x-rays necessarily so not only do you with the scanner not only do you get a great amazing scanning machine but you also get an even fantastic uh, the, I would say it's probably the best intraoral camera on the market and I don't even think that that gets promoted as, as it should. So, um, with, the, with the Omnicams there are a couple things um, <clears throat> that I'd like you to kind of keep in, keep in consideration. There are some hotkeys so you can push like the space bar for example to activate or deactivate your scanner and so there's a number of hotkeys like on the keyboard that you can hit instead of moving the mouse and clicking and trying to activate a tool you can just hit a button on the keyboard and it activates most tools. Also there's a warmer on the Omnicam on the, on the wand holder and that warmer keeps the, the scanner from fogging up when you go into the patient's mouth. So the patient has a warm, moist mouth. If you have a warm uh, scanner, when you enter into the uh, mouth, you don't get condensation. So if you have a cold scanner or a cold mirror, for example, like a hand mirror, you go into the patient's mouth, it has a tendency to fog up. But by warming that, we don't see that condensation on the actual lens. Um, <clears throat> we also uh, recommend to our doctors that they calibrate their scanner monthly. And uh, when they clean their scanner, they can use like a sani wipe or whatever on the whole surface of the scanner except for the lens. We actually recommend that our doctors use like a disposable lens cleaning cloths that have like alcohol on the actual, on the actual lens, mainly because those sani wipes that they sell are very abrasive, like a Brillo pad, and they can scuff or scratch 
um, the actual surface. Also harsh, harsh cleaners like the uh, cavi spray and stuff like that uh, can leave film or, or residue on the actual lens and so you end up having to go back anyways with alcohol to clean it up after using those. Um, also there's three different scanning sounds. There's one that sounds like a Geiger counter and there's one that have a nice, a nice gentle uh, melody to it. And so we would recommend to our doctors that if they don't like uh, people thinking that they're getting radiated with the, the scanner that they can simply change the scanning tones on off completely or they can change it to, to like a more pleasant melody. Um, uh, there's a battery pack in the Omnicam that allows you to move it from operatory to operatory, workstation to workstation, without having to shut it down completely. It's very convenient to roll the Omnicam, to have it in a self-contained system where you can roll it from operatory to operatory. You can use it in the operatory, roll it out, and move it into an operatory. So now you don't have to have a camera assigned to each room, but you can easily move it from, from operatory to operatory. Um, <clears throat> we've, we, talked, we touched on the pre-scanning technique um, uh, briefly, so I just want to review with you guys. Uh, also. This is the, the pricing down below. Uh, uh, when, you, when you finance it with Patterson, it's about $771 a month. Uh, that's about the same price as what you would spend on 20 PVS impressions. And uh, essentially, once you have taken 900 impressions with it, you've essentially paid for the scanner and what you would have spent on PVS and tray material. And another thing, too, that I, I think is funny is um, how, how often do you guys get get a case and you have like two or three impressions in it to make one crown. You know what I mean? It happens. But if you think about it, I mean that, that tray, let's say that that's a, a $45 impression, you know, has that doctor just, when they send you three impressions, have they just spent more on impression material than they actually want to spend on that actual crown? I mean, it's actually, it's actually amazing that, that, that that's kind of the, the mentality or the thought process on that, you know? So PBS impressions, are huge, huge time and, and money saver. Okay, when you scan with the, with the Omnicam, it's a little bit different technique than like maybe scanning with the, the blue cam that they had previously. When you scan the tooth, when you scan the case, you're gonna scan the occlusal surface. You're gonna, you're gonna run the scan, I like to run the scanner completely uh, uh, parallel to the occlusal surface. Then I roll over to the buckle surface, capture the buckle surface, but I'm going, I'm moving my scanner uh, 90 degrees to go parallel with the occlusal surface. So I don't wanna rotate just 45 degrees, but I wanna be looking uh, at my viewfinder directly onto the teeth as we scan. Um, and then <clears throat> one thing um, that happens is uh, the interproximals are sometimes difficult to scan. A patient can only open their mouth so far and they can only lift the wand up so far. Again, when we're scanning and we want to scan, like for example, the buckle, we want to have our scanner parallel to that buckle surface, but if we want to scan our interproximals, we have to somehow get parallel to the interproximals. A lot of people have a tendency to want to try to use the Omnicam like a hammer, like they're trying to pull a nail, and it doesn't work. It runs into the opposing teeth. It's very uncomfortable. What we like to recommend is that they come across the mouth and then rotate the scanner like this. It's comfortable. It doesn't get in the way, and we're just scanning. Instead of scanning with the long surface of the scanner, we're just using the short side of it. And so that's a good a tip, I would say, for scanning interproximal contacts. My presentations are available online, uh, and I'll post them. Uh, on my Facebook account, but you can actually watch if you would like a uh, scanning technique. There's also booths outside that have uh, Omnicams, and you guys can have some hands on and play around with the Omnicams and see how they scan. Um, <clears throat> with the digital impressions, here's just an example of what it looks like as we're capturing. It's, it's extremely easy to use. Um, when we scan, we typically try, not, try to position the scanner at the 12 o'clock position, and we don't look into the patient's mouth while we're scanning, but we like to view it, look at the viewfinder on the screen to see where, the, where, they're scan, where we're moving the scanner as we're scanning. And we can also see on the, on the, on the uh, actual scan missing information that we have that shows up as blue holes, and when we see those holes, we can move our scanner over to that area and capture that. Again, I just want to touch on the patient, patient comfort and satisfaction with this. Here's a particular case that I, that I didn't share it on Instagram. And uh, there's, a, there's a number of problems with this case. I look at this case and I think, okay, this doctor was, was kind of planning ahead. Here he has a custom tray, all right, that he had to have made prior to taking this impression. He also has two implant uh, 
impression copings in that impression. So he actually had to order the, the material. He actually placed implants or is restoring these implants. So he actually planned ahead to order those impression copings to take this case. But notice that this particular patient has their bridge located stuck into this PVS impression. In, ad in addition to having lost their bridge, this patient's tooth is in, is in the actual impression. So this was, I would say, an extremely painful impression. This patient lost their tooth because of an, a PVS impression. The doctor failed to block out the underside of the bridge, so when he took that PVS impression, it went around, the material flowed underneath the undercuts of the bridge at the ponics and pulled it off. This is, this, I mean, I, I can only, um, I can, o I can only imagine how discomfortable this was. Uh, when you take the PVS impressions, I don't think they numb the patient really to take two implant impressions. But here a patient lost their, their tooth and their bridge without anesthetic. And, I, and, I, and it's just, again, speaks volumes to the benefits of uh, digital impressions. And also, uh, with, with the digital impression experience, this is something that, that patients share, and it's a practice builder for our dentist. So our, our dentists absolutely love the digital impressions and they love what it's done for their practices because they love the fact that their patients go out and they talk to other people about it. Um, <clears throat> on the lab side, uh, we have the Serona Connect portal. So we're able to see cases that we've received. In addition to having this portal in our in-lab software, we also have the Serona Connect app. So I get notifications throughout the day whenever I receive a case from my doctor. So I know instantly when a doctor has a case that's ready for me to start designing and, and fabricating. So um, I can also, the doctor can also communicate what crowns he, he wants to have fabricated. He can communicate um, what type of material that he wants used and, um, and he can specify the day that he wants it back. In addition to any other notes that he wants to add, uh, gender, patient age, etc. Uh, and then with, with the digital impression, we're not limiting ourselves just to single units, just to brux or crowns. There's a whole, there's a whole um, array of, of uh, prosthesis options that we can uh, make for our, for our patients. So I, I just want to run through a couple examples with you. Um, on the right, we have a um, full arch, uh, an upper full arch that we did. Uh, it's an, a model free. We ordered a model just f to put, just for my, just to put the crowns on, so the doctor knew what crown went where. Um, we were able to actually mill these crowns, and uh, and they f they fit perfectly on the model. But that's something that we did completely model free off of a digital impression. There's also on the left hand side of the screen. There's a partial, and I want to tell you a story about this partial. Uh, this patient was uh, like an 80 year old female and uh, she wanted upper and lower partial, but she had, uh, the doctor wanted to scan the case. Um, it wasn't really easy to take the, the impression, the allergen impression for the partial on this particular patient. Uh, one of the things that was difficult to work around was with a partially edentulous patient, there is some soft tissue, soft tissue that we would have to work around on the lower arch, but once we were able to retract that soft tissue and, and maintain it out of the way, we were able to capture the arch, the patient's teeth, and, and get a good bite. We used that digital impression to fabricate or to design a partial to upper and lower partial. We made the upper and lower partial um, essentially model free and then at that same time that we had sent that partial that we had designed to 3D RPD for uh, selective laser melting fabrication, uh, we ordered um, an SLA model from Infinidim. Uh, about two or three days later, both the partial and the models came in and we were able to check the fit on, on the models that we had printed and they fit excellent. Uh, we couldn't actually process the denture to the, uh, the, the printed models, but we did duplicate them. We did set it up on the actual printed model and then we did duplicate the models to process, to, uh, to process the partial tube. Sent the case over to the patient, uh, to the doctor for, uh, for, for delivery and it fit perfect. I mean, it was, re it was really amazing. We were really, I mean, we were really surprised that actually we were able to get a, a partial with all the clasps and rests and everything that's involved with partial framework design to actually just drop in. So the patient had the partial, loved it, worked great, uh, and uh, she, had, she went off. About two weeks later, uh, she had gone to the hospital with her husband who was sick, and while she was staying there for a couple of days, 
uh, had taken her partials out uh, to clean or, or, or while she was sleeping or whatever. The night before they, they left the hospital, she had folded them up in a paper towel, set them on the tray. Uh, she, they left that day, she went home, and later that, that, that evening or whatever, when it was time to eat, she was look, or when it was time to, I don't, she was looking for a partial, I don't know what she was doing with them. She was looking for a partial, she couldn't find them. Well, she realized, oh, they're at the hospital, calls over to the hospital where they were at, says, hey, do you guys still have my partials? Well, no, they had cleaned up the room, everything that was in the room had been thrown away. They didn't know that the partials were in the paper towel. So the doctor calls me up and says, hey, patient, you know, tells me the story, patient's lost her partial. I said, well, no problem. Call 3D RPD up, have them refabricate the partial. We actually still happen to have the model, so we just seeded the, the partial. We had them overnight it, so we got it the next day, put the partial onto the model, set it up, processed it that day. We had a partial back to the doctor's office within three days of saying that they need to have it remade. Didn't require that the patient had had um, new impression taken. Didn't have to do. We didn't have to do a new alginate impression. We didn't have to do, do a new Omnicam impression. We already had the data saved, and that's a luxury that I think that when doing partial frameworks we don't have. I mean, typically we have the models, we, we, they get destroyed in the casting process, and they get destroyed in the process when we, when we actually process the, 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 the partials too. So this was, this was convenient because the data was already there. So this is another thing that speaks volumes to digital dentistry. Using it and incorporating it into our workflow allows us to save that data. So for, our, for like our, our Emacs press crowns that we offer, we scan in the models and we, we mill out our wax and we design everything in the computer just so we can have a digital record of it. Just in case anything should ever happen, we have that digital record and we're able to refabricate a crown quickly for, for the patient or for the doctor. Also, um, we've been able to do uh, model-free uh, abutments and screw retain crowns. So a doctor will scan using a, a scan post. They'll scan, uh, scan the patient and the implant location that, that comes into the in-lab software. We know where the indexing and location of that implant is, and we're able to make uh, both uh, abutment and crown or screw retain crown 100% model free, and we've had great success with that. Um, um, we've also been able to make titanium bridges, uh, gold crowns. Um, we've done veneer cases. Uh, we've done wax ups where we have the doctor actually take a model, they'll prep the model at their office, they'll scan the model with their Omnicam, send it to us, we'll design a wax up, mill it out, and then send that wax up, that wax pattern back to the doctor's office, they take it out, stick it on the model, they essentially got a wax up model free from the lab perspective. And so there's, there, I think that the possibilities uh, with, um, with digital impressioning and, and model free dentistry are really, 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 um, you know, unlimited. I think, I think if you can do it with a model now, you probably can do it without a model by just incorporating some type of a digital workflow. And then here's just a breakdown and comparison that I like to share with people uh, with other digital impression systems on the market. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I don't know how accurate these numbers are, but essentially um, with the, the, ban the advantages uh, of the CEREC uh, intraoral scanners is that once you purchase the scanner there's essentially no follow-up cost. I don't have to pay to have it converted to a particular file type. I don't have to pay to have it sent to a particular lab or to, or to a particular office. Those are things that are all, all included. That, that infrastructure, that support infrastructure and that communication infrastructure that allows the doctors to take that and send it to other locations is built into the service. Um, they do have an optional, Patterson does offer an, an optional warranty program that you can buy. There's an annual fee for the warranty, but that's not something that's required. So if you look at the cost of ownership over five years, the Omnicam is extremely, extremely affordable when compared to the cost of ownership of uh, other competing uh, scanners on the market. So uh, we've had a great experience with it. We love our Omnicams. We love uh, the triple tray scanning. And I want to share with you guys just a few uh, opinions from some of the doctors that we work with that have these digital impression machines. I told them that I was coming and I said, hey, I'd like to grab a couple videos real quick of you guys. Just give me your, your kind of uh, just your opinion on how uh, digital impression has, has affected uh, your life and, and the life of your practice. So. Let me know if you can't hear it. Hi, my name is Bill Bloom. I practice dentistry in Norman for over 30 years. About three or four years ago, I started doing digital impressions, uh, and I but they the lab that I was using 
made conventional crowns, layered crowns, press crowns. And so I still had the conventional problems that I had with those, you know, breakage and, and the expense, the high expense of, uh, of making a crown like that. So about two years ago, I switched to milled crowns off of a digital impression. And the, uh, the, the difference has been just significant. And I don't ever really want to take impressions again, first of all. And, you know, the cost of the impressions is, is very expensive to eliminate that. Patients don't like the impressions. Uh, so we love the digital digital impressions, but then the milled crowns just add a whole other facet to that. The strength of those, uh, and now that they look they look so so good comparative to uh, layered crowns, but we've had uh, relatively no breakage on either the zirconia or or the Emax crowns. So it's been a, just a boon to the practice. Uh, the fit is exceptional, and the beauty of it is you can change the parameters if you're getting contacts that are a little bit too high or too wide you can have that changed and then it's corrected on the on the next one so it's easy to modify so uh, it's been a wonderful thing for our practice and i don't ever want to go back thank you so this is dr bloom he's been practicing in uh, uh, norman oklahoma for about uh, 30 plus years now and uh, <clears throat> i mean he he was he was the you know, layered. I want layered a layered crown, a polychromatic crown. I want you know crowns made with a bunch of you know f you know seven porcelains or whatever. But he ran into the issues that a lot of people ran into, and he has kind of the the, the skeptical feelings about about layered crowns. So the idea of a monolithic crown off a digital impression was just uh, eye opening to him. So um, do, how are we doing on time? Do we have time or or do you want to open up to like a question and answer to wrap up or? Can I keep going? Okay. Um, I, I have some other videos I, I, you know, I'd love to share with you guys, but it, it, essentially it's the same message from all my doctors. I mean, it's just eye-opening to them. You know, they love the fact that they have a laboratory that they can, they can use this technology with, and uh, they, love the, they love us as a lab for providing that solution. Um, again, we're able to allow them with great turnarounds with the crowns using the digital impression the fabrication process is much quicker and it's beneficial both for them and us because we have a significantly lower amount of, of, of remakes and I attribute, it, I attribute it to making, to incorporating the lean manufacturing process of a crown using digital impressions. When we do an analog crown, what do we do? We take a PVS impression from the patient's mouth, so that's what we call our first data transfer. Then we pour up the model, that's our second data transfer. Then we trim that model and then we're going to go scan that, scan that model, or we're not going to scan it. We're going to trim that model and then we're going to put dye spacer and we're going to wax that crown. Once we wax that crown, now we're going to invest that crown and burn it out. So that's our fourth data transfer. Once we burn out that crown, we're going to cast it or we're going to and uh, press it with the Emacs, for example. That's a sixth, a fifth data transfer. Then we're going to take that crown and we're going to go sandblast it. We're going to cut off the sprue and we're going to go try to fit it back to the model that we have. And then it goes straight back to the patient's mouth. So we have set a da data transfer. So there's seven opportunities just in that workflow at the least where something can change, where some of the information can change uh, regarding uh, what the actual patient's tooth looks like. So I, it's just, I, I think it's a miracle that we even get the fits that we get in some cases. But it's no surprise that somewhere along that line something happened that caused some kind of error or some kind of discrepancy to where the crown didn't fit and now we have to remake that crown either by taking a new impression or by sending it back and retrimming it or, or something. With a digital impression we eliminate so many of those data transfers. We go straight from the patient's mouth to a digital impression. From that digital impression we design the crown still in a digital workflow and once we get it designed, then we mill it. That's our second data transfer. Once we mill it, there's no model to put it on, to adjust it to, 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 to incorporate or allow for human error in trying to think, in, in, in the ceramics trying to adjust it to what they think is right. So it goes straight to the patient's mouth. So there are two data transfers in the digital, digital workflow, from the digi to, the digi to the digital impression, to the mill, and back to the patient's mouth. So I just, <clears throat> I just uh, have such great confidence in digital impressions. We, we absolutely love it. I've seen the reactions of so many, so many dentists who just embrace the digital, the digital technology and have such, such great success with it. And we have had success with it, and I just want to kind of share that, with, share that with you guys. I'd like to open up any questions you guys might have about either digital impressions or triple tray scanning at, at this time, if you have anything. Uh, what's the, the percentage of uh, your work uh, modulus? 
So our monoliths work right now, um, we probably do about 30% of our workflows monoliths. We probably do about uh, anywhere from 12 to 15 crowns on a daily basis that are, that are model free. Uh, we average probably about, just uh, probably over a little bit over uh, 300, 200 cases uh, a month, two to 300 cases a month that are model free. Uh, in our lab, uh, we probably do about, um, uh, probably about a thousand cases a month, or somewhere somewhere around there roughly, about 40, 45, to 60, 45 to 50 units on average daily. What's the remake percentage? So the remake percentage on the, that's a good question, the remake percentage on the, uh, uh, digital on the digital stuff is less than one percent. I mean, it's it's absolutely amazing. In contrast to uh, the PBS PBS impressions, we probably have a remake uh, remake ratio probably of about seven percent, which I feel is a little high. And when you say when you say PBS, what about the impression scans you do with PBS? Uh, impression impression scans. Honestly, I don't have enough data to to have relevant on. It's a fairly new technology, okay. and uh, I I don't want to lie to you and make up some number. How many of those you do today? Impression scan again. It's it's a new thing really for us. Uh, we really have few doctors that do the impression scan. I'm, I was probably more interested in just introducing the workflow. Okay. Do you have a limit on how many units you'll try with a, a triple tray scan? It's just different the model. Like if it's a four unit case, hey, that's a contraindication for it. Single unit only. Um, I don't really have any advice on that right now, honestly. Um, I think um, I think really, if it, I, my feeling about it is that if the impression is good enough, if there's enough support in the tray, like whether we're using like a metal tray or some kind of tray that's rigid enough to support a large span, then I would feel comfortable doing it. That's a good question. That's something you probably would want to prove at your at your own labs. That impression uh, scan is only for the MDS five, not the. MDS5. Yeah, so triple tray scanning is specific to the Ineos X5. However, with the Ineos Blue, the older scanner that they have, you can do impression scanning. You can scan a full a f upper full arch, you can scan a lower full arch, and then you can scan what they call a, a, a blue bite, a, a mush bite, where it's a blue, it's a bite, but taken of the buckle surface, a buckle bite, and you can scan that in as your bite. So it's essentially, instead of scanning in models, you're scanning in negatives, but you just have to tell the software that you're scanning in negatives. So impression scanning has been available on the NUS bl Blue for a long time, um, but the triple trace scanning uh, specific is specific to the, the Ineos X5, and I'm really excited for the technology. I look forward to using it on some of the uh, uh, digital denture solutions that are coming out, w whether it's with Avident or uh, uh, is it Hertz Kohl's or whatever their their, pro their product that they have coming out. The jig for the X5 uh, is that something pretty new? Uh, yeah, the jig for, uh, the jig for the X5. I, uh, Michael, do you have any? Yeah, yeah it's pretty new. It just came out with. So it's just a it's just a few months old then. Yeah, there's the Patterson. I don't have any order numbers for me, but you can talk to your TM to get a get an order number for it. We can get you the order number, so it's very easy to get. Yes, sir. How do you convince your dentist to go monoliths? So um, that's a, that's a great question. Um, uh, Dr. Bloom, for example, was extremely skeptical. I mean, this guy's been doing it for 30 years. He has he set in his way. He had a great relationship with the laboratory. And uh, essentially, we said, hey, listen, let's do a same-day crown. Let's bring our Omnicam over, let's scan the patient, and let's, let's get you a crown, it, deliver a crown. It was a patient that had to be intubated every time they, or, or, or anesthetized, I'm sorry, intubated every time they came to the practice, sedated. And uh, so, you know, they, he, didn't, he didn't want to hire an anesthesiologist to come back another day just for a delivery appointment. So essentially, we scanned the patient. He did a couple fillings while we made an Emacs crown. We brought it back. It dropped right in. The margins were perfect. The interproximal contact was perfect. The occlusal contact was perfect. He couldn't believe it, and he said, "You guys are hired." Essentially, so telling that that story, just along with uh, explaining again, like the benefits of the cost-saving benefits, the uh, the patient experience benefits, the the workflow benefits. I mean, it, it's just a, a no-brainer for our doctors. On your side, are you able to increase the prices because of that same day turnaround? And yeah, we do. We do offer uh, increased prices. Uh, essentially, we have a standard three-day three-day fee that we, we, all our crowns are, are pretty much done in three days. So we charge 150 bucks for an Emacs or Zergoni crown, and then for like a next day crown, we just add an extra 50 bucks. For a same day crown, we add an extra 50 bucks. So 250 bucks for a same day crown. Trey, yes, sir. With your knowledge, uh, working as a assistant all those years in, in the practice, <coughs> how much money did it save in the billing aspect. With oh yeah, uh, yeah. There, that's a good point. Michael brings up a good point. I like to bring up that I kind of I think I failed to mention, but um, 
I think there's a huge disconnect between, I think a huge disconnect has grown between the lab and the doctor's office, and I feel strongly about this. I feel like, like uh, coming from practice management into the, the lab industry, I felt like labs more, had more of an opinion or an attitude of like, the doctor can get the crown when he gets it. He can get it when I get around to it. There was never like a sense of, of communicating back and forth and understanding the urgency of getting that crown delivered. We gotta get that crown delivered to the patient for a number of reasons. There's financial and uh, you know health benefits. Benefits of getting it to them sooner is that you know we don't have to deal with shifting of the teeth, eruption or moving of the teeth due to ill-fitting temporaries. So our first time fits for us are extremely high because we we get our doctors or crowns back. The other thing is a, there's a huge financial benefit to getting crowns back to doctors in a timely manner. When a doctor preps a crown, they don't get paid from the insurance company they, they, that they, they prepped the, they did the crown because they only did part of the procedure. They get paid when that crown gets submitted on the patient's mouth, in the patient's mouth. So when they have that final x-ray of that crown seated, that's when the doctors uh, get paid for that. So when we're able to help the doctors get that crown back to, back to them so they can seat it, that helps our doctors get paid sooner. So that, that helps them bill sooner. It also helps them start on the next step of the treatment sooner. So we're, they're able to help the doctors get through treat the patients quicker and we're actually able to help them get compensated sooner. Perfect. Thank you, Trey. Thank you All right, so thanks. Much. I appreciate you guys. Thank, thank you for the time. You, thank you very much.